Hey, yo, what's good y'all? It's Stinger, and today I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. Now, this tutorial doesn't involve any kind of music. Rather, I'm gonna be going over how to make some cover arts for your kits. And this is because most of the cover art tutorials on YouTube are a bit outdated. There aren't a whole lot of tutorials that are going over the modern cover art era. It's mostly just like those box cover arts and whatnot. And that's no shade to them at all, but that's just a little bit outdated. So we're gonna be going over how to make some modern cover arts. And this is the cover art that I'm gonna be breaking down today. So let's just get right into it. So the first thing that we're gonna go over is the typeface. Now for these kind of covers, the main creativity and the main focal point is going to be in the typeface. So rather than just using a font, which would make it look a little bit bland and basic, I like to sketch out my own typeface. That way it's just a little bit more unique. And what's great about this is the only things that you need are a pencil, pen, paper, and a camera to take a picture of the typeface. So here is what my original sketch looked like. As you can see, it's relatively small and it's all just done in pen. And you don't even need to be any kind of like art savant in order to do this. I can barely draw a stick man and I'm able to create these typefaces. So the first thing that I'll do for inspiration is I'll look up typeface alphabets. One of my go-tos is just to look up Chrome typefaces. This is because they tend to look more like jagged and edgy and they're a little bit more unique than other kind of typefaces. And I'll just go letter by letter trying to find something to build inspiration off of. And it all really just depends on the style of your kit. So for this kit, I wanted the typeface to be very grim and menacing. So I decided to search up some heavy metal fonts and draw some inspiration from that. Now, fair warning, sketching this literally took me like an hour. So be prepared to take a little bit of time to sketch it out. Now, what I do after that is I'll either take a picture of the sketch or I'll use a PDF scanner, which is what I did for this. And after that, you're just gonna grab your picture or your PDF scan and drag it into Photoshop. Now, here's another really tedious aspect of creating the typeface, and that is going to be tracing it. Now, for the tracing, I like to use the pen tool instead of the brush. That way I can get really, really precise points and move them if I want to. Now, to prevent it from looking like computerized and really jagged, I'll put probably like 200 pen points per letter. So I'll go over it and just do this. literally for the entire letter. And I'll repeat it for every single letter after that. Like I said, it's extremely tedious, but this is what it should look like after you've traced the entire thing. Now this is looking pretty sick so far, but I like to add in some little extra sketches. Now the theme of this kit cover was basically just to tap into like deep sea horror. So I decided to throw in some deep sea aspects. Like for the E, I drew in this little eel tongue and added in some little draping patterns, which I guess could be perceived as like kelp or something like that. And then I added in these tentacles at the bottom of the V, which really just just encapsulates that deep sea horror. After that, I threw down some more of those draping lines on the T and then the A. And finally, I just threw down this little worm looking thing behind the H and the T. So this is what our final typeface is looking like. As you can see, we already have a very strong basis for the rest of our cover art. And that is one of the biggest advantages of using a custom typeface over a font. You don't need to add in a bunch of extra graphics and visuals in order to make the cover art look good because just this looks pretty good on its own. But we obviously can't just have a black and white cover art with no image and no nothing. So let's get into the rest of it. The first thing that I threw down is our background image. And the place that I suggest looking for your background images the most is kind of weird, but Pinterest. I don't know why, but Pinterest always has the best art for cover arts and for like tight beat thumbnails as well. Like literally, I just looked up deep sea horror creature art and this popped up. Now this is looking a little bit bland and desaturated. So I wanted to add in some color. And to do that, I threw on an overlay. You can find color overlays literally anywhere. I just looked up green color overlay GFX and I already found one that would be pretty cool to use. And then literally all you do with these is you just change the blend mode to overlay and then just adjust the opacity to your liking. The next thing that I threw down is a second text. And this is just to explain what the kit is. So right here, real small, I just wrote down that it's a cinematic effects kit. And that kind of just clarifies it for anybody that's just looking at the cover and not like the caption or the description of the kit. The final couple things that we're going to throw down are overlay effects. And I like to go kind of minimalistic on these kind of things because if you overdo it, it can just end up looking awful. So I just threw down two things. The first thing that I threw down is just this VHS edges, which just creates a nice little border around the entire cover. And then I threw down this like little analog film overlay. For the film overlay, I have the blend mode on screen and the opacity at 38%. And for the VHS edges, I have the blend mode on multiply and the opacity at 100. So this is what it looks like without any of the overlay effects. And this is what it looks like with. These effects are kind of just the glue that puts everything together. Now, my final step when creating a cover art is to consolidate the entire track, if we're talking in music terms, and edit the entire image of the cover. And the way you do that is you just click on the topmost layer of your cover, and then you'll hit Control, Shift, Alt, E. And that will create a new layer with everything below it included. Now, there's a couple things that I'll do to this layer. The first thing I'll do is I'll go into Image and use all of these auto corrections. So I'll do Auto Tone, Auto Contrast, and Auto Color. 
And if I don't like how any of them look, like the tone, the contrast, the color, I'll just control Z and not include that one. Next, I'll go into image yet again, adjustments, and go to brightness and contrast. Now, this cover is kind of dark, so I'm gonna just push the brightness up to like 80. And already we're getting a much more bold and in your face result. And then I'll just put the contrast up to like 20. And the final thing I do is I adjust the vibrance of the image. I like to do this instead of saturation because it provides a much more subtle effect. And all I'll do is I'll crank it to 100 and then draw it back as needed. So I'm thinking like somewhere around 40. And boom, there we have our final cover image. Just to show you the importance of consolidating the entire image and making edits, this is what it looks like now. And this is what it looks like before huge huge difference so that's going to pretty much cover how to make some modern cover arts for your kits using custom typefaces hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial and learned something new if you have any questions please feel free to throw them in the comments down below and i will do my best to answer them also consider checking out my patreon where i post the flps for all of my beats and all of my tutorials as well as all of my sound kits and finally consider subscribing as i post one tutorial a week and two sound kits a month other than that that's going to be it peace